Hello. Good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon, teacher. Good afternoon. Where were we? I think we were doing reading from Unit 8. <clears throat> Page number. Page number 118. 118. Very happy. We discussed. We discussed about Molawi. Meeting a polar bear. I let you read it in advance, right? Meeting a polar bear. I wonder if we have read this, not yet. Is it finished? Uh, teacher, can you tell which one again? Into which one? Meeting a polar bear. Uh, teacher, we haven't finished the exercises. How about reading? Uh, we finished reading, sir. Oh, yeah, okay. I want to know that. Okay. Everybody start with that. Meeting a polar bear. Text XC. Page I'll my start reading. Uh, the right uh meeting a polar bear. I put my day supply of food into my day food bag and then began to pack the tent. I was completely engrossed in pulling the freezing tent poles out of the ice when suddenly I heard a deep, long growl coming from the depths of Charlie's throat. I looked at him and then in the direction in which he was staring. Even before I looked, I knew what I would see, a polar bear. Okay. How to describe the event meeting with the polar bear? Frightening? Yeah. <clears throat> in an amazing way, instead of saying like, I met a polar bear, and the writer introduced some phrases to make the readers interesting. So the first one, I put my day's supply of food. 
day's supplies of food. Day food bag. So you can you can highlight like day supply of food. Begin to pack pack the tent. I was completely engrossed in engrossed in pulling the freezing tent poles. Everybody highlight engrossed in pulling. How do you understand my angles in? How do you understand my angles in? Pay attention. Yeah, paying attention. You are interested in doing that. That is called angles in. The freezing tent holes out of the ice. So the place is very freezing, cold place. Suddenly, I heard a deep, long growl. For the for the boys, you can use like deep, long growl. Highlight deep, long growl. Recording in progress. Deep, long growl. <clears throat> Coming from the depths of Charlie's throat. Charlie, that is the that is the character character's name. So when somebody is afraid, you can hear a deep long growl sound from someone. The name is Charlie. I look at him and then in the direction in which he was staring. After that, you look at the one he looked at, staring at. Highlights staring. It means look. Look at something very hard. Or maybe for a long time. Even before I looked, I knew what I would see. A polar bear. So in this way, you could introduce what you saw. So you turn the second one. Um, I it was a family followed by two cubs coming slowly, purposefully floating through the rough shore ice towards me. They were two hundred meters away. With a pounding heart, I grabbed my loaded. Brief, uh, how to pronounce that? R I X L E. Floating through the rough shore. Uh, my loaded rough. Uh, oh, re -re wait, wait, wait. Which one? Which one? Um, with a pounding heart, I grabbed my loaded. Oh. I grab my loaded rifle. Rifle, rifle? is yeah, gun, gun. Loaded rifle and flare gun, and carefully walked sideways a few steps to Charlie, who was snarl, uh, snarling with a sub savagery that caught my breath. Without taking my eyes off the bear, I enclosed Charlie from his eyes and car and. Again, walking sideways, I led him to the sled where I clipped his chain to a tying down rope. Hmm. It was a female. It means a female polar bear. Followed by two cups. 
There were two cups, two baby bears. Coming slowly, you got none. Uh, the action words like slowly, purpose, and how to move. Plotting, highlight plotting. The bears, the way the bears walk, we call plot. We cannot say walk. Plotting through the rough shore eyes. Yeah, there is no ground, only ice. The bear is coming, coming to them. The dif distance is only 200 meters away. In other words, with a pounding heart, excitedly highlight this expression with a pounding heart. You hold another word for hold, grab my loaded rifle. So there are some. Uh, uh, the rifle is ready to shoot. My loaded rifle. Grab means hold. Play again and carefully walk sideways a few steps to Charlie. So the rider approached near Charlie with a rifle and can, who was snarling with a savory, a savory that caught my breath. You are describing Charlie as well. In this case, what is the meaning of snarling? How do you understand my snarling? Hello, can you hear me? Later, how do you understand my snarling? Um, make an aggressive growl. Yeah, it is a kind of growl. It means growl. And how about save it, save Jerry? How will you translate for save, save Jerry? It means like cruelly, brutally. Charlie was Charlie was growling. That caught my breath. So you were surprised. It means caught my breath. Without taking my eyes off the bear, how do you understand my that? Without taking my uh, surprise, mm, you could not. You could not move your eyes. It means without taking my eyes off the bear. So you you are just looking at the bear for a long time. I unclipped. Charlie from his eyes anchor and again walking sideways. How do you understand my unclipped? Unclipped means uh
release, set free, and clip released. From his ice anchor, and again walking side with, I led him to the sledge. You know, it is a kind of vehicle that uh, you can ride in the snowy place. Santa Claus in December, Santa Claus rides the sled. It is called sled. Where I clipped his chain to a tie down rope. So it is it's quite similar to the boat. So they need to use the, the anchor not to slip down. In this unit, wait, I will highlight some words. Okay, these words are supposed to be meant clotting with a pounding heart, with a pounding heart, rub. Okay, next one, touch raising. Can you read? The beer is not only one hundred. The bear. The bear. Yeah. The bear, now only 150 meters away, wasn't stopping. Her cubs had dropped it back, but she comes on with a steady measure. I tried. Why I uh, frantically tries to remember all the advice I had been given. Keep eye contact, move side weight or uh, slightly forward, never backward, stay clean, don't, uh, don't show fear. Uh, stand beside a tent as a slat uh, or other large objects to make uh, my short body as appear uh, as large as possible. Don't shoot and lack force to. Don't want uh, a bear. Uh, you will make it uh, even more dangerous and never run. Repeating to myself, stay claims, stay claims. I uh, find a warning short to beers left. I need to continue. No need. You, you are describing the animals, what you have seen here. Only 150 meters, um, wasn't 150 meters away, wasn't stopping. The distance is 150 centimeters, uh, uh, meters, sorry. And her cuffs had dropped back, but she came on with a steady measured stride. So she was coming to some, uh, grand, how should I say, slowly, because a steady measured stride with a steady measured stride. Why I 
frantically try to remember. Everybody, what is the meaning of frantically? All the advice I had been given. Why the bear was coming to him, to him, he was trying to remember all the advice that had been given. So in this case, what is the meaning of frantically? Why I practically trying to remember? It means you are you are afraid, frightened, and you are trying to remember some advice when you come out uh, when you encounter a pain. Practically means afraid. Keep eye contact. These are the advice. Move sideways. How to move sideways or slightly forward. Never backwards. Stay calm. Don't be too excited. It means don't show fear. Even if you are afraid, you shouldn't show that you are afraid. Or, yes, yeah, stand beside a tent. Just stay near a tent, sled, maybe a, a maybe a tent or sled. Other large object to make my short body appear as large as possible. So in their eyes, you may look big if you stay near the tent or near the sled. Don't shoot unless forced to. So if you are, if it is not necessary, don't shoot. Don't shoot the bear. It means don't shoot unless forced to. Don't wound a bear. Wound, do you know wound? Don't harm them. Don't make them have pain. You will make it even more dangerous. If you make it, it is more dangerous. They will, they will, uh, they will harm you. Never run. Don't run. So these are the advice. Repeating to my staff, uh, repeating to myself, stay calm, stay calm. I fired a warning shoot, a warning shot to the bear's left. So it means the rider didn't write to the bear directly. Just only the left of the bear. The, yeah, like this, the left of the bear. Just only a warning shot. Mm. We have finished up to this, right? Can I move, can you continue? A loud explosion. The loud explosion had no effect on she came. I fired a flare, landing it a little to her right. Her head moved slightly in its direction, but she didn't stop. I fired another flare, this time dropping it right in front of her. She stopped, looked at the flare bunny, a bright red on the white eyes, then looked at me. She was only the dimmy dust away now. The loud explosion had no effect. So it means although <clears throat> the writer fired a warning shot, she was not afraid. When she ca came, she came off. She continued coming towards um towards the <clears throat> the writer. I fired a flare, landing it a little to her right, right, warning shot. Her head moved slightly in its direction. Just look at, look at that, but not, 
the the animal doesn't look excited that she didn't stop. I fired another play, this time dropping it right in front of her. Left right in front, she stopped, looking at the flay, burning a bright red on the white ice. Then look at me. She was only 30 meters away now. Okay, go on. Priya, would you like to read by this time? Um, by this time, my nerves were as tight as violin strings and my heart could have been hard at base camp. The bear began to stop around the flare and I dropped it another meter in front of her. Again, she stopped it, looked at the flare and at me. Uh, then she fixed her tiny black eyes on Charlie, who was stringing at the end of uh, his chain. Snubbing and snarling, trying to reach her, she looked back at her cubs. I could sense her concern about Charlie snarling and her cubs. She waited for her cubs to catch up, then moved to my left in a half circle. I fired two more flares in quick succession, trying to draw a line between her and me. She stopped it, then moved back towards my right. I fired two more flares, and again, she stopped it. She seemed to want to, uh, sorry, she seemed to want to cross the line of flares, but wasn't sure of the result of Charlie, so she elected to stay back. She kept moving right in a half circle, still 30 meters away, finally, with a less long look. She plodded north with her two new calves curtain behind her, their snow white coats contrasting with their mother's creamy pale yellow color. Mm -hmm. For the time being, just look at the book. I'm going to move the screen. I don't know why. By this time, my nerves were as tight as violin strings. Everybody highlight, my nerves were as tight as violin strings. That is the comparison. Your fear is compared with the, the tight tightness of violence and my heart could have been hard at base camp so another uh, a sort of hyperbole you know you are describing how how fear you uh how should i say how you felt afraid my heart could have been hot at base camp. So you were, your heart was beating at that time very seriously. So it could be hot at base camp. I, it is a sort of hyperbole. Highlight, my heart could have been hot at base camp. The bear began to step around the flame stepping walk and I dropped another a meter in front of her. Again she stopped. Look at the flare and me. Then she fixed her tiny black eyes on Charlie. 
who was training at the end of her, his chain, snapping and snarling, trying to reach her. She looked back at her caps. So, you know, the way the bam, the bam moves is quite similar to the passe. I could sense her concern. Everybody highlight. I could sense her concern. So it means that the writer knows what she is worried about. She is worried about, about her caps, babies. I could sense her concern. And Charlie snarling and her caps. So the writer knows what she is afraid or she is worried. Charlie snarling and her, her caps. She waited for her caps to catch up. At the time she didn't work and she waited for the baby caps. Then moved to my left in a half circle. I fired two more flares in quick sessions. So continuously. The writer shot two more times continuously. Trying to draw a line between her and me. She stopped, then she moved back towards my right. I fired two more plays and again she stopped. She seemed to want to cross the line of plays. She wanted to cross the line, but was unsure of the result and of Charlie. So she elected to stay back, elected to stay back. She chose to stay back. She kept moving right in a half circle still 30 meters away. Finally, with a last long look, she plotted north with her two new cups trotting behind her. Another walking here, animals walking is called trotting. T-R-O-T-T-I-N-G. They are snow white coats. So it means their fur is white. Contrasting with their mother's creaming pale yellow color, but mother bear has creamy pale yellow color, but baby bears, snow white, very white. Here you could learn the movement of the animals, plot and trot. Okay. We will continue the last part. Amelia, would you like to read the last part? Uh, yes, teacher. The whole episode lasted. The whole episode uh, lasted about uh, lasted five minutes, fifteen minutes, uh, but seemed years long. My hands were shaking as I stood. They are holding my profile and flare again, watching that tree row slowly move not. Right. But in spirit, right? in spite of the mind, oh, uh, in spite of the mind, numbing fear that still gripping gripped me, I could feel deep down inside a real satisfaction. I now knew that I could stand up to a bear in the wild and stay calm enough to function. With Charles, Charles, um, how I had help. Charles, how I had passed Charlie's my first test. I had passed my first test. It lasted only 15 minutes. That the episode lasted 50 minutes, but seemed years long. So it means he was afraid, the writer was afraid, and it seemed too long. And the ashim of fear, hands were shaking as I stood. 
and holding my rifle and flare gun, watching the trial slowly move north. Yeah, that is the, the rider's action. But in spite of the mind numbing fear, everybody highlight mind numbing fear. Do you know numb and you envy numb? You have no feeling. You began numb. I, I think How do you understand you, my numb? If you feel numb, you can feel anything. Yes, that is called no feeling. Mind numbing. How do you understand my mind numbing? Mind can't think anything. Mind, in this case, can't think anything. we could not translate directly. Why do you become numb? Mind you numbing fear. Fear. Fear, you know, fear. You are, you are too afraid. Mind numbing fear means you are seriously afraid. Serious fear. Serious fear. Still grip. Still grip me. It means you still you are still afraid. My numbing fear that still grip me. You could, I could feel deep down inside a real satisfaction. But you you are satisfied for something. Because I could stand up to a bear in the wild and still calm enough to fashion. Now you know you could still come if you encounter a wild animal in, in the jungle, in the real situation. You know what to do, fashion means do. In this, with Charlie's help, I had passed my first test. Yes. So, yeah, what I want you to do is Page 119, number 7, this activity focus, focuses on the punctuation and language of text HC. For the language, I let you highlight some interesting expressions. Now, number A, rewrite the following extract from the passage, changing the punctuation to show how colons and semicolons are used to introduce and separate items in a list respectively. And the second one, different ways of indicating a parenthesis. So I will do that. Next page. Yeah, this one. I will show you as an example. I am frantically trying to remember all the all the advice I had been given. So in this sentence, I want to join instead of putting full stop. So I had been given. What can I put? And the rest are advice like keep eye contact, blah, blah, blah. Colon. Keep... Yeah, it must be colon. Once I taught you, right? It is another brightest. That is the example. Can you try the rest? 
Where were you put colon? Where were you put semicolon? Do it. Let's do together. Sui Tung, could you please read? By the way, Sui Tung, can you see my share screen? <clears throat> I'm not sure that's what. How about now? Can uh, you yes, see my share I can, screen? I can see. Okay. Will you please start reading? So that is the full sentence. So, and the, the advice are followed. So I will put colon. Oh. Mm, ah, sorry. After that, what what are you going to put next one? Um. Before, uh, don't shoot a semicolon. Hmm. How about keep eye contact? Keep will be small because of colon. So this will be small key. Keep eye contact. After that, don't don't put anything. Colon after that semicolon. So you need to remove comma, and you need to put. 
semicolon. That way. Move sideways or slightly forward. Here, another, another point. So where will you put semicolon? Move sideways or slightly forward. Um, slightly forward. Mm -hmm. Another semicolon. Mm -hmm. Go. On. And behind, never backward. Mm -hmm. I never backward. Next one. Um, behind still come. Yes. Next. And behind don't show fear. Yes. You stand beside a tent. Mm -hmm. Stand beside a tent, sled or other other large object. Yeah, we, we must consider that. Stand beside a tent. Another similar object is a sled. Where you put, that is one point only. Where you put semicolon between a tent and sled. No need. No need. You don't need to put a tent or sled. They are just they can be taken in account as one point. Stand beside a tent, sledge, or other large object to make your body appear as large as possible. So in this case, you are giving example for instead of all, you can put other um other punctuation marks. You can omit all. And instead, you can put, you can put dash. It means other large objects to make your body appear as large as possible. They are quite similar. You cannot put a semicolon. Because stand beside a tent sled other or large object to make your body appear as large as possible. Up to that is only one point. But other large object that is additional information. You are giving the example a ten and sled and giving more additional information what they are, large object. So in this case, if you want to use punctuation mark, instead of all, you can put dash. Okay, uh, Delita, how about next sentence? Before don't shoot unless folks do. Oh, wait, you can put other large object. That is an extra information, so you can put it between two. Uh -huh. Dash. Dash, wait, wait. wait. To make your body appear as large as possible. Other large object and sled, they are not the same. So you put extra information. For extra information, instead of two dash, dashes, you can put brackets. You have that rule, right? Have you ever, uh, I think that, I, I have already told you. Dashes or brackets. Just reviewing. Mm. Don't shoot. That's sentence. To later next sentence, how will you continue? 
Ah, uh, yeah. Before don't issue, we can put semicolon, I guess. Why do you want to put semicolon? And here is a separate sentence with full stop. Why? I think they like they are advice. Yes. So a series of advice, right? Starting from keep eye contact, move side, sideways, blah, blah, blah. So they all are, yeah, they all are advice. So you can put, you can, you can put semicolon and then another semicolon. Uh, we can put before don't want a bear, like mm -hmm. after two. Yeah. Okay. And then don't want a bear. You will make it even more dangerous and never run. Don't want a bear. Here. In the previous one, other large object, we put dashes. Do you see that? So here, the writer has already used dashes here. You will make it even more dangerous. That is called additional information. So I, yeah, you can put dashes or another one. What can you put? This is called parenthesis. Brackets? Brackets, yeah. If you don't want to put the given dashes, another way is you can remove and you can put bracket. Mm -hmm. Oh, Only bracket. So the main idea is that when when you write the adv advice or a list of word, a list of things, the main one colon, the other facts semicolon can can be used to separate to separate the advice or facts. And additional information, you can put dashes or brackets. Okay. Additional information like here, dashes, they are called parentheses. Now we will go to B. Number B. Yeah, everybody, we are mainly focusing on comma still and still comma. In the first one, my hands are, sorry, my hands were shaking as I stood. My hands were shaking as I stood, still holding my rifle and play again. If there is comma, you know, but it means the punctuation is important. If you put punctuation wrongly, the meaning will be different. So in the first point is here, explain how a change of position of the comma from before to after still in the, in the quotation below and will change its meaning. Okay, we will discuss that. That's why penduration is also important. Here, comma is here. Still is at the back. My hands were shaking as I stood, still holding. 
in this case, Sin, I knew how do you and then am I still holding my rifle? Then I mean, how do you understand my the given sentence? There is comma and still holding. How do you understand my this? Hmm? Sumi, how about Sumi? Who wants to say, come on? It takes time just for discussion. It means he was still holding his wife. Mm. He was afraid, so his hands were shaking, and he was, because of his fear, he was still holding his rifle, right? Okay, because of this comma, we have, we translate like this. This time, I will put comma after still. Comma is here now. After still, not before. So this still is not included. Uh, this comma is not included. You must understand like that. My hands were shaking as I stood still, holding my rifle and play again. How do you understand my like this? My hands were shaking as I stood still, holding my rifle and flaring flaring can. Stood still. If I put comma after still, how will you translate? Are the meanings the same? When he hmm? was standing, he was his hands were shaking. Uh, and after that, uh, mentioned about like holding his rifle. Uh, he was still shaking when he was like. That the hands were shaking when he was still standing. Really? So it's not very different as the, the previous sentence. If I put comma before still. Uh, in my opinion, I think uh, if you put comma before still, like my hands were shaking as I stood. Uh, he was just standing and uh, like he was just standing for a short time and his hands were shaking and the uh, holding the rifle is longer than standing I think uh, but when you put comma behind the still uh, I, I think standing is longer than holding the rifle holding the rifle wasn't that important uh, at all like the stood still is how can I say uh, considered as the most important more than the holding rifle. The first one, my hands were shaking as I stood. Still holding means that as you were so afraid, you could not put down your rifle and you were still holding for a long time. The second time, coma is after still. It means stood still means that you didn't move. You could not move. You, you just stood still. No motion, it shows that no motion happened because of your fear. The first one, the action is holding your rifle and flare again. The action of holding your rifle and flare again is mainly focused because of your fear. The second one, I change the location of comma. I stood still. It means that you didn't move because of your feeling. That way. Now I will go to C. Hyperbole. You know hyperbole. Exaggeration for effect. Uh, can you give me some examples? Why I was discussing, I, I gave you the prompts. Can you find hyperbole? There are two or three hype, three expressions that show hyperbole.
Okay, let's discuss hyperbole. Kevin, can you give me one expression for hyperbole? Can you find Vanessa, Emily? One expression for hyperbole. Uh, what about my head could have been had at base camp? Mm, correct. Where is it? Second page. Yeah, Which line number? Uh, second paragraph line two. Yes, correct. Avery, this is hyperbole. My heart could have been hard at base camp. One hyperbole. You are describing things exaggeratedly. Vanessa, another hyperbole. Name you another hyperbole. The last paragraph, first line. The whole will be deserved of 15 minutes, but seems years long. Mm, correct. Seems years long. That is hyperbole. Any other? One more? Touch with, uh, touch with it is finished. How about Sumi? The loud explosion. Mm -hmm. It is not hyperbole. The loud explosion is general. The explosion is quite loud. No. Uh, by this time, my nerves were as tight as violence. Uh, mm. it, uh, hey. Fifth paragraph, first line. Yes, you are right. My nerves were as tight as violin strings, and my heart could have been as tight as. In my point of view, you know, it can be more like as as button. So it is simile. My nerves were as tight as violin string. Um, mm. It can be called hyperbole too. Hyperbole as well as, because of as, as, it may be simile. Oh, Uh, Yeah, there is any a bad word in the white eyes. Where? Right. Um, uh, in the first, first paragraph, the next is on page one, one grammar day for the first paragraph. Two, three, then we put a white eye, then we a bright red on the white eyes. Hmm. Zoom in, zoom in. Could you please repeat? Where is it? Um, uh, it look at the square bunny a bright red on the white eyes. Where is it? Uh, 
Oh, I mean, um, page one one nine, the first part. Yeah. At the next page. Mm. Oh, you. oh, look at the play, Benny, a bright red on the white eyes. I don't think it is hyperbole. It is general description. Benny, a bright red on the white eyes. No. Yeah, the previous one, it is quite confusing. We could say that it is hyperbole as well as simile. Both are possible. Uh if the like uh the the second paragraph in page one one nine is my heart could have been heard at the base cap. Is that finished? Yes, that is finished. Oh. Uh, so, uh, what about good Mm, see, I had a deep, a uh, long growl. Growl. Yeah. Wait. Uh, in first page, the first paragraph, the third line. I had. A deep, long growl coming from the depths of Charlie's throat. Sometimes you could hear that uh, it's, it's not hyperbole. You could hear clearly someone's breathing when somebody is excited or afraid. So I think it is enough. Number two is cliche. Cliche, what is the meaning of cliche? How do you understand my cliche? Overused phrases. By putting the phrases, uh, you know, the, the meaning of that expression can go beyond. Overused phrases, unnecessary phrases. Extra information. For example, like the heart is pounding, it means beating. You said like pounding, pounding heart with a pounding heart. Instead of saying like excitedly, you say pounding and heart. Any other? Any other extra information?
I'll jump by another cliche. Let's let's do together in the first paragraph. Everybody check. Even before I looked, I knew what I would see. So in this case, you could say like, I I knew what I would see. Instead, you put extra word like, even before I looked. That is called cliche. Any other? Pounding heart. In the second paragraph, can you see more? More extra information? Here. Yeah. Who was snarling with a sip, Jerry? It is enough. And you put like, that caught my breath. Let's go further down. They are just the friends. Okay. I could feel deep down inside a real sister fashion. You could say that way. Is that you put like in spite of extra information, in spite of the mind numbing fear that still gripped me. It is not that necessary. Okay. That's all for C. 7 ABC. Narrative duration, just for knowledge, I will let you read. This one. For activity 8B, narrative duration. I will let someone read out. The rest read silently and try to understand. So Mary. Sometimes an account of an incident relies on the reputation of the same action to make the situation seem more tense than if reported more economically and at the speed at which it really happened. What it really happened? The firing of the phrase could be reduced to one sentence and described as a repeated action. 
Writers have to consider duration, how long things last, when giving an account, uh, whether to make amount of time taken to read about an action reflect the amount of time it looks for it to be performed or to take more or less time as this has an effect on the narrative pace and impact of the description. For instance, he packed his suitcase or a taxi and left the house is a serious process where he is, uh, is describing yes. to someone where falling downstairs. Basically, someone falling downstairs would take longer than the performance of the action. Mm. It means that, you know, in this test, you could see repetition. Actually, unnecessarily, some expressions are used. So you can omit it when you write. You don't need to repeat the information many times. Why do we put repetition? Here, why, why does the writer use repetition? To make the situation seem more tense. To make the situation seem more tense. In the test, you might notice the phrase like the firing of the flares. Another point is sometimes you can omit omit the details, speed up process. Like he packed his suitcase, called a taxi, and left the house. So that is. This type of process is not necessary. So instead, you should put more interesting points instead of the, the understood points that everybody knows. So to leave the house, you have to pack the suitcase and also you have to call the taxi and leave the house. You don't need to mention. So such kind of speed up process can be omitted. And you can instead you should put important points. Hmm. So everybody, next day I will do HG. AD, oh wait, just introduction. I'll tell my read. AD is a description of the process of yam. A uh, text AD is a description of the process of yam planting in eastern Nigeria from the novel Things Fall Apart by Tinoa Achebe, set at the end of the 19th century. Mm. Do you know yam? Uh, yes, it's like a vegetable. Mm -hmm. oh, we, yam is plentiful in Myanmar too. How do you understand my yam? Where can you get yam? Where can you get yam? I'll turn back. From the plant or from the ground? Uh, I think from the ground. Yes. Yam, the, the eatable, touching tuber of a climbing plant that is widely grown in tropical and subtropical countries. Potatoes, yam, sweet potatoes, right? They grow under the ground. Yam plantation, yam planting. The background is about Niger yam planting in eastern Nigeria. 
The extract is from the novel Things for a Part. The background is 19th century. Okay, for today we don't have time, so I will let you read ahead this reading test at home. 8D. And trying to understand some new words. Just reading. Please read at home. That's all for today. Any question? Homework is reading. Any question? Do you have something to ask me? Hmm? Nobody, nobody says anything finished yes so okay so no question so i will stop don't forget to do homework right bye bye, bye, -bye. bye, -bye. bye, -bye. bye, -bye. bye, -bye.